Lawrence Edward Page, born March 26, 1973, is an American computer scientist and internet entrepreneur. He is best known as one of the co-founders of Google along with Sergey Brin. Page was the chief executive officer of Google from 1997 until August 2001, stepping down in favor of Eric Schmidt, then from April 2011 until July 2015 when he moved to become CEO of Alphabet Incorporated. Created to deliver major advancements as Google's parent company, a post he held until December 4, 2019, He remains an Alphabet board member, employee, and controlling shareholder. Creating Google built a large amount of wealth. Forbes placed him 10th in the list billionaires 2019, and as of July 2020, Page was the 13th richest person in the world with a net worth of $69.4 billion, according to Forbes. Page is the co-creator and namesake of PageRank, a search ranking algorithm for Google. Page received the Marconi Prize in 2004 with co-writer Brin. Page was born on March 26, 1973, in Lansing, Michigan. His mother is Jewish, his maternal grandfather later immigrated to Israel. However, Page upbringing has been done without any religious practice or influence, and he has declared himself no formal religion. His father, Carl Victor Page Sr., earned a PhD in computer science from the University of Michigan. BBC reporter Will Smale described him as a pioneer in computer science and artificial intelligence. Page's father was a computer science professor at Michigan State University and his mother Gloria was an instructor in computer programming at Lyman Briggs College at the same institution. During an interview, Page recalled his childhood home was usually a mess with computers, science, and technology magazines and popular science magazines all over the place, an environment in which he immersed himself. Page was an avid reader during his youth, writing in his 2013 Google Founders Letter, I remember spending a huge amount of time poring over books and magazines. According to writer Nicholas Carlson, the combined influence of Page's home atmosphere and his attentive parents fostered creativity and invention. Page also played instruments and studied music composition while growing up. His parents sent him to music summer camp, Interlochen Arts Camp at Interlochen, Michigan. Page has mentioned that his musical education inspired his impatience and obsession with computing speed. In some sense, I feel like music training led to the high-speed legacy of Google for me. In an interview, Page said that in music, you're very cognizant of time. Time is like the primary thing and that if you think about it from a music point of view, if you're a percussionist, you hit something, it's got to happen in milliseconds, fractions of a second. Page was first attracted to computers when he was six years old, as he was able to play with the stuff lying around first generation personal computers, that had been left by his mother and father. He became the first kid in his elementary school to turn in an assignment from a word processor. 
His older brother also taught him to take things apart, and before long, he was taking everything in his house apart to see how it worked. He said that from a very early age, I also realized I wanted to invent things. So I became interested in technology and business. Probably from when I was 12, I knew I was going to start a company eventually. Paige attended the Okimos Montessori School, now called Montessori Radmore, in Okimos, Michigan, from ages 2 to 7, 1975 to 1979. He attended East Lansing High School graduating in 1991. In summer school, he attended Interlochen Center for the Arts playing the flute but mainly saxophone for two summers. Page holds a Bachelor of Science in Computer Engineering from the University of Michigan, with honors and a Master of Science in Computer Science from Stanford University. While at the University of Michigan, Page created an inkjet printer made of Lego bricks, literally a line plotter. He thought it possible to print large posters cheaply with the use of inkjet cartridges. Page reverse engineered the ink cartridge and built the electronics and mechanics to drive it. Page served as the Beta Epsilon chapter of the Eta Kappa Nu fraternity and was a member of the 1993 Maze and Blue University of Michigan Solar Car Team. As an undergraduate at the University of Michigan, he proposed that the school replace its bus system with a personal rapid transit system, which is essentially a driverless monorail with separate cars for every passenger. He also developed a business plan for a company that would use software to build a music synthesizer during this time. After enrolling in a computer science PhD program at Stanford University, Page was in search of a dissertation theme and considered exploring the mathematical properties of the World Wide Web, understanding its link structure as a huge graph. His supervisor, Terry Winograd, encouraged him to pursue the idea, and Page recalled in 2008 that it was the best advice he had ever received. He also considered researching teleprisons and self-driving cars during this time. Page focused on finding out which web pages are linked to a given page, considering the number and nature of such backlinks as valuable information for that page. The role of citations in academic publishing would also become pertinent for the research. Sergey Brin, a fellow Stanford PhD student, would soon join Page's research project, nicknamed Backrub. Together, the pair authored a research paper titled The Anatomy of a Large-Scale Hypertextual Web Search Engine, which became one of the most downloaded scientific documents in the history of the Internet at the time. John Battelle, the co-founder of Wired magazine, wrote that page had reasoned that there. Dot. Entire web was loosely based on the premise of citation, after all, what is a link but a citation? If he could devise a method to count and qualify each backlink on the web, as Page puts it the web would become a more valuable place. Battelle further described how Page and Brin began working together on the project. At the time Page conceived of Backrub, the web comprised an estimated 10 million documents, with an untold number of links between them. 
the computing resources required to crawl such a beast were well beyond the usual bounds of a student project. Unaware of exactly what he was getting into, Page began building out his crawler. The idea's complexity and scale lured Bryn to the job. A polymath who had jumped from project to project without settling on a thesis topic, he found the premise behind Backrub fascinating. I talked to lots of research groups around the school, Bryn recalls, and this was the most exciting project, both because it tackled the web, which represents human knowledge, and because I liked Larry. In 2007, Page married Lucinda Southworth on Necker Island, the Caribbean island owned by Richard Branson. Southworth is a research scientist and the sister of actress and model Carrie Southworth. Page and Southworth have two children, born in 2009 and 2011. On February 18, 2005, Page bought a 9,000 square feet, 840 square meters, Spanish colonial revival architecture house in Palo Alto, California designed by American artistic polymath Pedro Joseph de Lemos, a former curator of the Stanford Art Museum and founder of the Carmel Art Institute, after the historic building had been on the market for years with an asking price of 7.95 million US dollars. A two-story stucco archway spans the driveway and the home features intricate stucco work, as well as stone and tile in California arts and crafts movement style built to resemble De Lemos's family's castle in Spain. In 2011, Page bought the $45 million 193-foot Superiat Senses. Page announced on his Google Plus profile in May 2013 that his right vocal cord is paralyzed from a cold that he contracted the previous summer, while his left cord was paralyzed in 1999. Page explained that he has been suffering from a vocal cord issue for 14 years, and, as of his May 2013 post, doctors were unable to identify the exact cause. The Google Plus post also revealed that Page had made a large donation to a vocal cord nerve function research program at the Voice Health Institute in Boston. An anonymous source stated that the donation exceeded $20 million. In October 2013, Business Insider reported that Page's paralyzed vocal cords are caused by an autoimmune disease called Hashimoto's thyroiditis, and prevented him from undertaking Google quarterly earnings conference calls for an indefinite period. In November 2014, Page's Family Foundation, the Carl Victor Page Memorial Fund, reportedly holding assets in excess of a billion dollars at the end of 2013, gave 15 million dollars to aid the effort against the Ebola virus epidemic in West Africa. Page wrote on his Google Plus page that my wife and I just donated 15 million dollars. Our hearts go out to everyone affected. Page documented his management tenets for his team to use as a reference. Don't delegate, do everything you can yourself to make things go faster. Don't get in the way if you're not adding value. Let the people doing the work talk to each other while you go do something else. Don't be a bureaucrat. Ideas are more important than age. 
Just because someone is junior doesn't mean they don't deserve respect and cooperation. The worst thing you can do is stop someone from doing something by saying, no period. If you say no, you have to help them find a better way to get it done. My job as a leader is to make sure everybody in the company has great opportunities and that they feel they're having a meaningful impact and are contributing to the good of society. As a world, we're doing a better job of that. My goal is for Google to lead, not follow that. The ultimate search engine would basically understand everything in the world, and it would always give you the right thing. And we're a long, long way from that. I like going to Burning Man, for example. An environment where people can try new things. I think as technologists we should have some safe places where we can try out new things and figure out the effect on society. What's the effect on people, without having to deploy it to the whole world? If we were motivated by money, we would have sold the company a long me ago and ended up on a beach. Lots of companies don't succeed over me. What do they fundamentally do wrong? They usually miss the future. It's quite complicated and sounds circular, but we've worked out a way of calculating a website's importance. Many leaders of big organizations, I think, don't believe that change is possible. But if you look at history, things do change, and if your business is static, you're likely to have issues. If your access to healthcare involves your leaving work and driving somewhere and parking and waiting for a long me, that's not going to promote healthiness. Computing is kind of a mess. Your computer doesn't know where you are. It doesn't know what you're doing. It doesn't know what you know. Especially in technology, we need revolutionary change, not incremental change. If you ask an economist what's driven economic growth, it's been major advances in things that mattered, the mechanization of farming, mass manufacturing, things like that. The problem is, our society is not organized around doing that. Big companies have always needed and cooperated in areas where it made sense. We're at maybe 1% of what is possible. Despite the faster change, we're still moving slow relative to the opportunities we have. I think a lot of that is because of the negativity. Every story I read is Google versus someone else. That's boring. We should be focusing on building the things that don't exist. The invention is not enough. Tesla invented the electric power we use, but he struggled to get it out to people. You have to combine both things, invention and innovation focus plus the company that can commercialize things and gets them to people. 
If you're changing the world, you're working on important things. You're excited to get up in the morning. Our goal is to organize the world's information and to make it universally accessible and useful. We don't have as many managers as we should, but we would rather have too few than too many. For me, privacy and security are really important. We think about it in terms of both. You can't have privacy without security. Most people think companies are basically evil. They get a bad rap. And I think that's somewhat correct. If you say you want to automate cars and save people's lives, the skills you need for that aren't taught in any particular discipline. I know, I was interested in working on automating cars when I was a PhD student in 1995. We can't have democracy if we're having to protect you and our users from the government over stuff we've never had a conversation about. We need to know what the parameters are, what kind of surveillance the government is going to do, and how and why. I have over 2 million followers now on Google+. I like using my Samsung 005930KS tablet. I previously used the Motorola Xoom for a while and liked that. My grandfather was an auto worker, and I have a weapon he manufactured to protect himself from the company that he would carry to work. It's a big iron pipe with a hunk of lead on the head. I think about how far we've come as companies from those days, where workers had to protect themselves from the company. It matters whether people are working on generating clean energy or improving transportation or making the internet work better and all those things. And small groups of people can have a huge impact.